Hello everyone, and welcome back to my top 5 weapon series for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Today, we'll be covering the Switch Axe, which is the original Mighty Morphin Power Sword and Axe combo from Monster Hunter Tri. The Switch Axe has long been a popular choice, and for good reason as the Axe form packs mighty destructive damage while the Sword Mode packs flashy combo finishers, which makes the weapon highly adaptable and really fun to use. Starting us off at number 5, the Saber's Bite 2. It's been a long time since we had a Jaggers weapon on the countdown, but this one is very good. 910 raw, white sharpness, and non-elemental boost make this a pretty powerful weapon and it's probably the easiest switch axe in the entire game to craft. You just have to kill a couple of great Jaggers. It's rarity 10, which makes it really powerful when upgraded, or at least relatively powerful compared to how easy it is to make. And it has a very rare file type, the Exhaust File, which means your sword mode attacks will do KO damage. I find that typically you can knock out a monster in 3 or 4 full discharge combos on the head. Good raw, extreme ease of crafting, and low rarity for augments plus exhaust file is actually a really good combo and is great to carry you through the early to mid game. Number 4 is the Golden Crescent, the Golden Raytheon Switch Axe. This thing has incredible raw of 1015, along with white sharpness and 15% affinity plus the signature 390 poison element, plus a level 1 slot for a little bit of flexibility in your build, and a power file. So the file attacks only apply when you're in sword mode. Power file is generally the best one because it means your sword attacks just hit harder on the raw side of the spectrum. Combine that with the already high raw damage and poison status on the Raytheon switch axe plus the positive affinity and you have a recipe for a great all around switch axe that's good against almost every monster. Number 3 is the Black Harvest, the Alatrion switch axe. 981 raw is pretty darn good, but the main selling point to me as always is extreme amounts of purple sharpness. You're basically never going to run out of sharpness using this thing neutral affinity, and a very impressive 661 dragon, plus two level 2 slots, and a power element file which serves to sharpen the weapon's dragon slain identity, give us a switch axe that is a great, or at least decent all-arounder that you never have to sharpen and that destroys dragons like nobody's business. Number 2 is the Lightbreak Axe, forged from Raging Brachidios parts. 1050 raw, which is absolutely top tier, plus purple sharpness, although you can't extend it with handicraft as usual, neutral affinity, and 270 blast element, which is my personal favorite status, plus a very good level 4 slot and level 3 slot combo, make for a switch axe that asks very little of the player to do a lot of damage, especially when you add in the power file for the sword mode attacks. Overall, as usual, the lightbreak axe is an absolutely top tier pick, and will serve you well through the entire late game. Of course, it does pale in comparison to the number one on the list, the True Fatalis End, bringing in a frankly phenomenal 1225 raw, plus natural purple that can only get longer with handicraft, this weapon is a monster. The drawback, of course, is negative 30% affinity, which is low even for a Fatalis weapon, but it does have a little bit of dragon element to boost back up, and two level 4 slots as usual. The power file is where things get really crazy though. The high raw damage on this makes the axe mode attacks really hurt hard, and then the power file enhances it even further in sword mode. Taken all together, the raw damage on this weapon and the power file more than make up for the negative 30% affinity, especially if you have the Fatalis armor and can compensate by putting on a lot of crit skills. The Switch X does like to have power prolonger, but I don't think it really needs any other skills besides that. As a result, your builds are very flexible and you can put in a lot of crit skills if you want to. And as usual, I have a couple of honorable mentions here for you all. The first is an exciting one for me, the Baroth Dozer 2, made from the Baroth. 945 raw, which is pretty good. Blue sharpness, which is pretty bad. You're going to want handicraft on here to get access to that white. Negative 20% affinity, which is pretty bad. You're starting to wonder why this is even getting an honorable mention. It does qualify for non-elemental boost, which helps a little bit. And it has two level 2 slots, which also helps a little bit. And it has 25 defense, which also helps the tiniest bit. But what makes this really fun is that it has a paralysis file. So when you're in sword mode, your attacks inflict paralysis. Usually you can get one one or two paras off in a multiplayer hunt, which actually makes this Switch X one of the best support options in my opinion, especially if you're trying to help lower rank hunters like I sometimes do. It is also rarity 10, so it's good for augmenting, and non-elemental boost as usual does patch up the raw damage quite a bit. My second honorable mention is the Moonstone Hoarfrost, which comes from the Frostfang Baria. This Switch X is less of a raw option and more of an elemental option. It only has 945 raw, same as the Baroth, but it does have natural purple and a decent amount of it too, plus 15% built-in affinity, but the impressive part is 480 ice element, which is great versus a lot of monsters in the game, and that power element file. It's similar, if a little worse, than the Elatrion Switch X at doing the elemental damage builds, but it does occupy a similar niche while being way, 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 way easier to craft. So if you like messing around with elemental style Switch X, this is going to be your best mid-game pick. Let me know down in the comments which Switch X is your favorite and why. And let's also talk about which mode is the best. I prefer the Axe mode. Really like the brutal combos and extra part break damage you get in that form. Anyways, that's all I've got, so thank you so much for watching, and come back next time.